Well, just got off work and Ohio 2018 starts right now. Guys, I got a friendly reminder for you. Always mark your trail camera locations. All right, well, we found the camera. Like I said, always mark that position on your GPS. We didn't mark this one or a couple others and the woods look totally different now than they did then. And Hell, it's been two months then, so. It's got 500 pictures. There's a rub over here, a small one behind us, so I'd say we'll have some deer on it. I don't think we got it in exactly where we needed to have it to catch the best bucks moving through here, but you never know. I'm going to pull it, and I'm going to make one loop. I'm going to go back over here to where we jumped a buck back uh, September and see if there uh, is any rub lines opened up or see if there's any good buck sign, and then I'm going to get out of here. But so far, so good. So here's what it looked like in front of this camera. And we chose this spot um, back uh, Labor Day because we had some different trails. Like you can see there's one there. There's one cutting across this way. There's one coming from that way. There's a lot of stuff that crossed right here. And uh, during that time of year, it's really hard to decide on where to put a camera. But... That's soft dirt, but you can still see, and see it's rounded out. Hoof's not real sharp. That is a good sign. Real good sign. Alright guys, well, we got to this uh, new spot we looked at back Labor Day and uh, there's one truck here and uh, which is fine I'm gonna go pull the camera that we set up over that bed see if we got anything on it uh, kind of scout for some people sign and uh, maybe take a look at some new areas but I'm gonna start my track on Onyx uh, if you're a public land hunter or just a hunter in general you really should have on X. It really helps, especially on public land. It shows us public lands, it shows boundary lines, everything. It makes life a lot easier. All right, guys, update. It is 11 o'clock, and I'm at this uh, new property I was talking about. We're gonna scout. Look behind me. We've got a big pond. I'm gonna have to uh, go get some rubber boots though. I've uh, had a ton of rain. We've got about over two inches more coming. And uh, the place I really wanted to scout, you got to cross a marsh to get to it, which I like the sounds of. So I'm gonna scout what I can on dry land. I'm gonna go buy some, buy some rubber boots. And then I'll probably go across the marsh one evening, maybe tomorrow evening or just depends. And uh, I'll just scout it with the stand on the back. If I see something, I'll set up, but it looks really promising. So far, I've seen a bunch of thickets. Uh, the habitat at this area is phenomenal, like best out of anything we've looked at in Ohio. It's incredible. Um, downside is there is pressure. And judging by the boot tracks, there's several people hunting it this year too. So, I don't think I'm going to be able to outwalk them because I'm in here a good ways right now and there's still boot tracks. I really like the idea of having to cross a marsh to get to the hunting land. It's going to weed out a lot of people. We're going to dig into it here and see what we can find. Overall, it looks very promising. But, not just here, but the place I looked at this morning. I'm really surprised at the lack of sign, just overall lack of buck sign. It's kind of crazy. I've seen some scrapes, seen some old rubs, but we were in here, like I said, Labor Day, and there was a lot of rubs, look right there. There was a lot of rubs that were opened up then because uh, they were just coming out of velvet then, so. 
but there's not a lot going on right now we're gonna hoof it back this road and see what we can find I'll show you what we see well we finally got into some good bucks on here and I want to say I got this rut it's a bed perfect bed got the cover to his back overlooking this bottom and out through here the wind coming this way you you can't tell but there's a pond behind me too so he's like totally insulated the only way danger can come is from around the pond this way or this way it's perfect and I want to say that there is not one rub within 75 yards of that bed and it just smells like rutting buck so we're starting to get on them now we're getting somewhere that's a rub which he's standing on he's standing on high ground there but he's got gouge marks up here that's a good one what's crazy is it pinches down right here at the back of this pond there's like sloughs and ponds and waters everywhere funnels them down pretty good so we're gonna see what we can find here what's up guys well it is hold on let me look it's 1 30 whoo it's been a long day already but uh, just want to give you a quick update. That new spot I went and looked at, I covered about four and a half miles. It is big buck habitat just everywhere. It's got everything from marshes to ponds, sloughs. It's all thicket. I got on that one uh, buck bed that I showed you. And he's only got like two exit trails coming out of it. So you'll definitely see me hunting that before it's said and done. I was on my way to pick up a kayak to hunt another spot and I'm gonna run in here where I killed my buck last year and pull two cameras or one camera for sure hopefully they're still there if the one of them is still there we should have a good idea of what's running in these woods I had one there last year and it seemed to catch every deer that I saw from Stan so hopefully I'll be showing you some big buck pictures soon we made it Whew. Look, road's way down there. The only thing that sucks worse than that climb is that climb with 50 pounds on your back. That said, we've hunted some steeper stuff before, but that one's right out of the truck. It just kicks your butt right off the bat. This has grown up a lot taller than it was last year. Uh-oh. Uh, well, that's, that's not what we want to see. I mean, it is. We want to see deer beds, but not on our access route. It's set up really well for the deer, but it's pretty fresh though, pretty fresh. You can see, I mean, it's just big buck heaven. It's just thick, nasty creek bottom. Kind of like the other spots, I haven't seen much for rubs. I've seen some small ones. A lot of deer tracks. A lot of deer poop. So they're in here. Just not leaving a lot of sign. Well, the one camera's here. This isn't the one I'm excited about, but it's still here. And there's deer tracks walking right to it. So if that, I'm hoping that other one will be. That's the one I really want. Guys, take my advice on something. Don't ever buy a muddy trail camera. Looks like that camera just took a bajillion pictures as soon as we set it and quit working. We set it on the third 
It quit on the 4th of September. All that time. I hate trail cameras. hightailing it out of here. We just had a interesting turn of events. My camera is still there or was still there and like I expected there was something good on it. There was like a 140 class buck. Looks like an absolute tank. Was there last night at 620. It was still shooting light. So kind of mad at myself for going in there and pulling them cameras. But it's supposed to start raining. It hasn't done it yet, but I'm praying for it. Maybe wash that sin out for me. That's what I'm hoping for. Man, that's awesome. I got a buck to chase. That 140 buck, or 140s is what he looked like. I don't know if he's a 10 or a 9. He's got 5 on his right for sure. He's definitely a shooter. But uh, I'm trying to think of what I want to do. Obviously, hopefully that's not his bed. Obviously, first reaction you have is you want to go hunt him. But the winds are so high today that they're swirling down in that bottom. I need it to be calmer and from a different direction. But uh, I'm going to get back to the truck here and uh, we'll come up with a game plan. Like, well guys, we got the kayak. And it rained there for just a minute, but not nearly enough. And now I'm going in here to where Logan's dad hunted last year to check the one camera I still haven't checked today. This place gets some pressure, but it's always got the best rubs. Always have good pictures of uh, bucks. Logan's dad saw two shooters or two really good bucks but it seems like everybody in Ohio knows about it. Everybody hunts it. If you could ever manage to get it to yourself, you'd have something special. And it's a short walk. There's a road. Whoop. Young buck. Probably wondering why I say young buck, but uh, I know the diameter of the tree really doesn't matter at all, but I do believe that the height of the rub matters greatly. You gotta rub as close to the ground, pretty much take it to the bank, that's a young buck, even if it's on a big tree. But now you could have a tiny sapling that's rubbed above your waist now we're talking. Oh, well, we found a stand. Look. Like I said, everybody in Ohio knows about this place. I think this stand should probably be like in the Smithsonian or something. I'd like to know the I'd like to know the deer that that ladder's seen. Alright, here is a great 
lesson in sign reading. I was talking about earlier that the height of a rub, I think, correlates to the size of the deer. You know, it doesn't matter the diameter of the tree, but the height it is on that tree. You know, if it's down shin high, it's a younger deer, but you start getting waist high, it's a bigger deer. But if you look at this rub, look at that. You're like, holy cow, that's chest high. But look, it's all the way down next to the ground. So if you didn't really, if you didn't really pay attention here, you'd be like, oh, that's chest high. That, that's a big buck. Well, it's also down here next to the ground. What's happened with this tree is as he's working it, he's, he's bent it over. You can see there's not much backbone to this tree. And he's bent that over and raked it all the way up to there. So pay attention to the sign you're seeing. Now that said, there's probably been a good buck through here. Maybe even living here at one time. But he did not make that rub. <laughs> so, if it was a snake, it'd bit me. But I saw this limb hanging down looks peculiar you see the underside of the leaves generally that means something's been cut so I pick it up sure enough it's been cut and I'm like what in the world because we're in the middle of a thicket and usually all the pressures back towards the road then I look up and BAM If I was a deer, I'd have been shot too little too late. Surprisingly enough, with all these tree stands in here, the damn trail camera's still there. I'll be really impressed if the SD card is still there. Well, the good news, there's a shooter that was on that camera in here where Logan's dad hunted on the 21st and the 23rd of October in the morning between 6.45 or right at 6.45 both mornings. Looks like a three-year-old or a really good two-year-old. So, I told you. There would be a good buck on there. More than one day, same time. But there's people all around, so who knows. The key to this whole place is the thicket. It's not these hardwoods. All right, guys, let's get out of here. It just keeps getting better and better in this spot. Look at this one. See that ladder stand right there? Right there. Um, I think he probably has a shooting lane to the asphalt. I know you can find an overlooked spot close to the road, but I don't believe this is it. But at least guys are getting out hunting and at least I know where they'll be hunting. I think they're all in this one spot.